The prom center in St. Paul, Minnesota is 35 years old, approximately. The big bands have never stopped uh, appearing on stage at this location. But this night has been a major event because uh, it's had added a new tone, a new dimension, and a lot of new color. Thad Jones has been on the scene with Mel Lewis, and these two gentlemen have an interaction going that leaves space for soloists and exciting, uh, colorful textures and tonality that, uh, well, makes the big band business sing anew. Thad Jones, it's good to see you again. It's good to be here. You know, it's been it's been quite a few years since we've been in this area, and you know it's always a a really extreme pleasure, you know, to come back. Well, I know that you uh, in the past have been working in such uh, remote corners as Saginaw, Michigan, and with Sonny Stitt, and maybe out of Des Moines, Iowa, with Harold Maupin and uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Oh Charlie Gator over there, and. Uh, I, I, the last time I saw you was with Count Basie with all those young lions. You know, you spoke about, about Harold and Charlie. You know, we, we go back to 1946. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's beautiful of these guys to even, even think, you know, that I would be, probably be around, you know, at, <laughs> and, 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 and at the very least be appearing in the ballroom here, you know. I think that's beautiful. And here they are. Harold, come on over are. here. Yeah. Charlie, yeah. it's good to see you. And it's good to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Charlie Gator, the last time I saw you, you were, you know, deeply involved with the Dave Rooney group and a number of other trios, but mainly Dave's group. And Harold Maupin, of course, is a television director now. He's yeah, always heard. watching time. I heard about that. You know, I, I saw him looking at his watch when we were on the last set. <laughs> I think he. I think he's in league with the promoter. Uh, <laughs> of course, we're really referring to the fact that he was a drummer way back, and and you you were composing and arranging back around yeah. 1946 for yeah. that group with Harold. And yeah, for some time. You know, actually, I wrote. You know, I wrote my first arrangement when I was around 13 years old, and it was uh, probably the. I, I refer to it as the most as the first outside arrangement ever written because I wrote everybody in a different key. <laughs> you, know, you know, not knowing, not knowing. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and, and the sound that was produced by all of this, you know, it may, may have been, may have been very uh, indi indicative of the, of, of the trend today, you know. You never can tell about those things. You, you may have a tongue caught in cheek there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably sticking through the other side by now. <laughs> Thad, you grew up in a family that must have been competitive when you, I think of your brothers, uh, Elvin, who was also a timekeeper, a drummer of formidable skill, and uh, a pianist by the name of Hank. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know about competitive because a competition usually involves, uh, you know, uh, competing with another person on, on the same instrument. We all play different instruments, and if it... Uh, yeah. I, I would say, you know, if there was a word that could be used to describe it, it uh, you could say, is there w such a word as collaborative? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's that's what we try to do. We more or less try to combine our uh, thoughts and ideas, you know, and and try to make something, try to make something meaningful of it. Yeah. It certainly has grown and matured through the age of Count Basie and his band with all those young lions, such as Jimmy Cleveland oh, and yes. Art Farmer, uh, who were coming up at that time. But down in the front section with the two Franks, Foster and Wes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And there you were up in that brass section. Yeah, Joe Newman, Snooky Young, Wendell Cully. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, Winging back to the tradition <laughs> of Jimmy Lusper. Oh, yes. Through oh, Snooky yes. Young. Well, so. you know, actually, you know, it was... It was, it was Maybe it may have been a sort of, it may have been a part of that tradition, but I think Basie established a sort of a, a, a tradition of his own, and uh, you know I, I was just very happy and proud to be a part of it. 
This collaboration with you and Mel Lewis and these marvelous musicians that you've gathered under your wing, mm -hmm. of course, can be heard on Monday nights, usually at the Village Vanguard. I understand you're going to have a 10th anniversary. Well, actually, it's our ninth anniversary. We, we're into our tenth year. We should have we should have celebrated our ninth anniversary on the first week in February, but unfortunately, you know, no, no, I won't say that. Fortunately, we're out on the road and we're working, you know, which is uh, it seems to be a, a sort of a phenomenon with with big bands, you know. To, uh, I'm I'm referring to working. <laughs> I understand. You know, and, and working on the road. You know, Which is even more remarkable these it, days. It really is. It really is because uh, the business has sort of taken a downward swing for a number of years. Although big bands have always been around, they've been more or less in the mon minority. And uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's very gratifying to see to see the the swing coming back around again. Something that also is remarkable is the tremendous commitment that. Uh, that I think the audience senses in in what is uh, provided as musical materials, the new compositions that you play, the whole concept that you have. Mel, very modestly up in that uh, rhythm section, keeping time. You being a, let's see, I think Harold remarks, someone said that you look like a surgeon in action in a way. I, I'd trust you with my appendix or something more serious <laughs> conducting that orchestra. Well, you know, actually, you know, we we've uh, we have a have a, a very compatible working agreement with each other. We we both we are both friends first of all, and uh, collaborators, you know, secondly, and and uh, partners in in a great venture like uh, that deals with such musicians as Pepper Adams and. And you, you, you name them, you know, like the... Well, think, that I young think, genius I, you have from the Eastman School, oh, uh, yeah. Janice. Janice Robinson and John Faddis, you know, Jerry Dodgen, you know, George Mraz, you know, like I, I could name the whole band, which maybe I should do, you know. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, you? Two, the two Bridgewater brothers, Cecil and Ron. And uh, what, uh, Wayman Reed on, uh, along with in, in the trumpet section, and uh, Billy Campbell, very young but uh, progressive thinking lead trombone player and soloist, and uh, Earl McIntyre who plays bass trombone, and of course Billy Harper, you know the Texas Tornado, yes, and um, Eddie Hickus, who plays. Uh, alto and soprano and clarinet and flute and you name it you know he he does it all and he does it does it extremely well and uh you know uh and the uh well i mentioned him did you yeah mentioned yeah him. yeah he's a he's a, a gentleman who was here from czechoslovakia and leonard Ref leonard feather referred to him as as the multi-fingered bassist and at times it sounds as though he's playing a bass with maybe three or four hands. It does know. sound that yeah. way. You know. And uh, Walter Norris on piano, who's a West Coast product, who has been living in the East for the past 15 years. You know, he he went back, uh, he visited his home for the first time in 15 years when we made out on this last trip, on this trip that we're finishing right now, you know. It's certainly it remarkable that you've gathered together such an expensive grouping of highly artistic professionals and are I'm, able to I'm take sorry, them out I'm of sorry, New York I'm and sorry, on the road. I'm sorry you said that. I'm sorry you said that. <laughs> on that uh, note. <laughs> <laughs> when you said expensive, I think you, you ruined the interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see. Who, who should we call for the rewriting of the budget? Well, let's call it. Let's call the Secretary of the Treasury, because <laughs> he'll probably be the only one to be able to pay him off now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Thad Jones and Pepper Adams uh, and uh, Harold Moffin and Charlie Gator, all of you standing by here. It's a pleasure. Uh, sitting in, but most of all, just being a part of the audience and catching the interaction, which uh, 
we could get Monday nights at the Village Vanguard, and we invite anyone who is traveling east from this part of the country to fly into Monday at the Village Vanguard, That's Greenwich good. Village in New York. Sounds like a winner. Thad Jones for Mel Lewis and all of your marvelous talents. Thanks for your time. Thank you.